So today we're going to be going over the steps that I use to breathe some new life into an older unibody MacBook. So what I have here are a bunch of unibody MacBooks. A lot of people have these older unibody MacBooks and have stopped using them because they got too slow or too old. But there's actually a lot of life left in these. So with a, a few simple tricks, a little bit of money and some hard work, you can get these up and running very, very nicely. So for today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating on this late 2011 Unibody MacBook Pro 13 inch. And we're going to be going through the steps that I use whenever I'm kind of refurbishing or I guess it's not really refurbishing, but whenever I'm fixing up a MacBook to use in 2018. So we're going to be not only upgrading this machine, but cleaning it out and giving it some much needed attention. All right, so while I shut this machine down, let's talk about what we're going to do today. So the first of many problems that a lot of people have with these older devices is slow mechanical hard drives and smaller amounts of RAM. So my machine has the stock configuration, which at the time was a 500 gigabyte hard drive and four gigabytes of RAM. Now, the hard drive has plenty of storage, but it's really not that fast, so I'm going to be upgrading it with a 120 gigabyte SSD. I got this on Amazon for about $30 the other day, so it's not an expensive upgrade, but it's going to do a lot to increase the speed and performance of this machine. Additionally, I'm also going to be upgrading the RAM to 8 gigabytes, something which is a little more expensive, around $40 or $50, depending on where you find your RAM, but is definitely going to be useful for machines like this that we want to use with more modern operating systems and tasks. So one of the problems that people have with these older computers is that they run really hot. And there's a couple of reasons why this is the case. The first is that there's just not very good cooling on these unibody MacBooks. There's really only one vent and it's both the intake and exhaust for this machine. So it's really not that great for that. But the other two reasons are that these machines have really bad thermal paste that's applied from the factory, and this particular one is seven years old, so I can't imagine that it's performing very well. Additionally, and this is something that I've already addressed a little bit, but this machine is probably very, very dusty on the inside. So if we clean out the fan and the heatsink with our compressed air, we should be able to increase the amount of air that this computer can put through it. So without any further ado, let's crack open this device and get started. I'm gonna grab my iFixit toolkit, and I already have some of the screws taken out on the bottom case, but you only need a small Phillips head screw to get this bottom case off. So while I'm taking off the bottom case, I do wanna point out that this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step guide where I'm gonna show you every single detail because um, this, this is something that I like to do on all the unibody MacBooks, regardless of what screen size or year. So the steps might vary a little bit. This is a 2011, as I said, but it might be a little bit different depending on what model you are upgrading. So for more detailed walkthroughs of what you want to do to your computer, I definitely recommend going to iFixit for detailed tutorials that will pertain to your specific device. And it's also where I got this toolkit, so that's nice too. So now that we're inside, what I'm going to do is take out the hard drive. So this is a mechanical drive, and we're going to be upgrading it. Now, one thing to keep in mind when doing this is the hard drive is mounted with these screws that hold it in place, and you're going to want to save those screws to put on the new drive. And with those screws transferred over, we can put the hard drive back and screw in the little bracket. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is take out the RAM. So if you want to just replace the RAM and you aren't concerned about doing that stuff with the thermal paste or cleaning out the heatsink, you can just stick the new RAM in. But for what I'm going to do right now, since I'm about to take out the motherboard, I'm not going to put the new RAM in until we get this motherboard all sorted out. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is clean up this motherboard, get the dust out of the fan and heatsink, and replace the thermal paste. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is take out the fan so we can clean the blades. So once I've got the fan out, I'm just going to grab some compressed air and blow through there. Okay, so we're going to put the fan off to the side, and now I'm going to pull out the motherboard.
Okay, so now comes the tricky part. We're gonna pull out the motherboard and I'm going to rest it on this microfiber cloth so that we don't get it scratched on the table because it's a little bit of a delicate process. You gotta make sure that you're careful. We don't wanna damage anything. It can be a little tricky to pull these guys out of here. Oh gosh, this board was actually kind of stuck down. I'm gonna take the battery out real quick. The board was kind of stuck to the top of the keyboard. That's weird. Ooh. Wow, that is dusty. Holy moly. Yeah, this is definitely going to get cleaned. Oh my gosh, I, I see. The the sticker on the heatsink was actually stuck to the top of the keyboard cover here. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, let's move this out of the way here. Now, I'm not sure how well you guys can see this, but this is one dirty, dirty motherboard on the underside. Look at that. Wow. No wonder this thing is having trouble getting cooled. I can imagine the thermal paste under there is garbage, and look at how dusty it is. Wow. Okay, so, our old friend the compressed air comes back. Wow, that is... It's really incredible how dusty these things get. <sighs> Alright, so now let's get to work on removing this heatsink. I'm going to be using this Cooler Master High Performance Thermal Compound, which sounds fancy, but it was like $6 at Micro Center. Oh, wow. That is incredible. I need to, I, I gotta pull my phone out again to show you guys just how little thermal paste is on here. I mean, look at that. You can see the shine of the CPU die. That is truly amazing. This machine was running really, really hot and the fans were always going. Now I know why. Look at that. That is absolutely shocking. So I'm just going to use a little bit of a paper towel here to clean off this really just crap thermal paste that's on here. Not too hard to clean off because there's not much on here. That truly, guys, I've never seen a CPU. I've done this procedure a ton of times and I've never seen such a lack of thermal compound. It's truly just embarrassing to be seeing that little on there. Okay, so now we're going to take our thermal paste and we're going to stick that on there. Then we're going to spread that around a little bit, not too much. Okay, now we'll put the heatsink back on. Here we go. So whenever I put the heatsink back on, I like to put all the screws in lightly and then tighten them down so we get a nice even pressure across the CPU die because I don't want to don't want to force anything. We're working with delicate components here. And you want to be really sure not to over tighten. Definitely don't want to over tighten. Okay, so now I've got the motherboard all fixed back up and we're going to put it back in this machine. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a tech repair if we didn't have some obstacle. There's a little bit of a nub on the heatsink, and it won't lay flat unless I pull out the speaker for a little bit. One very important thing to do is when you have the motherboard seated, make sure that you go around and check that all of the connectors are on top of the board, because if you get them trapped under, and you have to take the whole board out again, so it's good to make sure that those are there before you start screwing the motherboard back in. We're finally going to upgrade our RAM here, put in the 8 gigabytes. Okay, and now we can put the bottom case back on, finally. <sighs> oh.
Okay, so now that this machine is reassembled, we can test to make sure that we put everything in it correctly. Now, of course, I already installed macOS on this SSD, so we should be good to go. Ah, ah it's so good when you see that login screen. So we should be all good to go. I'm just gonna log in real quick. So as you can see, this repair didn't take too, too long. It took me about 40 minutes to do with um, all of the upgrades that I did here. Um, so it would have taken me less time, but I did run into a couple of road bumps with the uh, logic board kind of getting stuck a little bit. But other than that, it went very smoothly and it really isn't too difficult to work on these older machines. So now this machine is all nicely upgraded. We've got eight gigs of RAM, 120 gigabyte SSD, nice clean new application of thermal paste. This machine should be good to go. Of course, this is not the last you're gonna see of this 2011. I will have a video dedicated to this because it's an interesting story, but that'll do it for today's video. So of course, make sure to like and subscribe and please consider following me on Twitter at Luke Miani and don't forget to join my subreddit. Link is in the description below. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.